Each episode of the Lion Goat podcast is completely improvised. Expect comedy. Do not expect consistency or sense to be made. This is random nonsense for your amusement. I am Podbot. I was inspired by the excellent podcast, Improv for Humans, with Matt Besser. Listen to his show. On today's episode, we class things up again with a witty, but droll interview with another surprisingly candid guest. Warning, the following podcast contains explicit material intended for emotionally immature adults. Trigger warnings for this episode include discussion about adult themes, violence, profanity, political incorrectness, emotional, mental, physical abuse. You should not listen to this. It might rot your brain. Listen to a better podcast. Seriously, stop. Stop. Don't continue. Okay, have it your way. I warned you. Is there a guest that we had planned for today? I just thought maybe we could do a surprise guest. Oh, I see. I see. Oh. <laughs> well, okay. If you feel like that's best, Carol, I'll trust your judgment now. Okay. Okay. okay thanks for All right. Thank you. Did you need another plot? No, no, no. Not before I go on air. No. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I just offered him a nice pop. And I thought that would keep him. Okay, thanks. Yeah, now, we're downtown. Let's get in some jumbo at the giant eagle. And, oh, shit, it's on the mic still inside. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd love to welcome you to another episode of Droll Interviews with Perspicacious Thompson. Today we have a very special interview with a person that I believe is considered in many circles a fancy gentleman. Precipitatious. Uh huh. Yes. Yes, Mike is just a little bit quiet. Really? Quiet. Could you get a little closer? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Sorry for the eruption. Uh, excuse me, young man. Uh, no. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Obviously, I am. I am here for the show. Yes, my name's Carol. I'm the line producer. I'll be helping you out tonight. Now, I would like you to go right in that little office of yours and you tell the host that today's talent has arrived. See, that's, that's not really my role. You could just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about why you're here. Are you ready? Precipitatious. On your mark. Okay, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd love to welcome you to another episode of Droll Interviews with Perspicacious Thompson. I'm your host. I hope you're all having a splendiferous day out there. Today we have a very special interview with a person that I believe is considered in many circles a fancy gentleman. Perhaps a circle of one. <laughs> uh, you can tell, in fact, that I am a fancy southern gentleman by the fact that I am indeed wearing a... Well, excuse me. ...top hat and tails, and uh, I am indeed I'm carrying a cane, sir. It seems a bit much for the radio. Well, of course. Yes, I can see your outfit, sir. It's, it's rather dapper. Perhaps it's a bigger circle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I did indeed come by stretch. Chevy Silverado, mm -hmm. tinted windows white. Oh, well, that sounds quite nice. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it just seems a bit braggy to me. I stop <laughs> turn off this microphone. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful beast of a machine. I've never seen a stretched pickup truck, I believe they're called. Is that what they're I believe called? that uh, you would indeed uh, love to take a ride with me in it. In the pickup truck? you? Uh, I mean... Anytime you'd like, sir. The champagne in the back. And I... Well, I'm not sure the champagne that you would have would quite reach up to my standards. I do have a uh, eloquent palate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Hot tub in the bed, you know what I'm saying. In the bed of the truck, you're saying? Yes, sir. That is, that is indeed correct. Excuse me, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, this is Carol, the line producer. Yes, sir. I just... No. Not a sir. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. If, if you could just explain who you are. I did. And why you're here. Also. Mm-hmm. 
perhaps you could tell us a little bit about how long you've been in the business. Mm, yes, I've been a plantation man for oh dear seventy five years probably. Well, it's a, it's been it's a been generational. You see, it's not just me. My my daddy and my dad before me. Uh, I didn't ask. I'm not sure I'm interested. Uh, are we sure we have the right guest? Uh, yes, precipitations. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, this this is the guest. Unfortunately, oh wait, I didn't mean to say that out loud. Uh, no. Yes, unfortunately, this is the guest that we have this week. We're hoping that it'll, uh, you know, just pan out in the wash if we just uh, have a few more of these unexpected guests. I see. Would that be okay? Okay. Okay, okay thank you. Let's continue the interview. You have the plantation? Mm -hmm. Well, the thing about that is, uh, I mean, the kids have a saying in the street. Why, why am I still living on a plan date. Oh, yes, that would be a question. There's certain uh, racist overtones of that type of environment, I I would think. Well, it's, it's a home on land, uh, with a, uh, and we do farm, you see. Uh, we've got farm workers. and uh, Are they sharecroppers? Uh, it's not. They're not against their will. Well, that's wheels. good. It, 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 I, I do, I do declare it. It is not, as you're, you're saying to me, it, it is not slavery involved. No, I would I would never imply that you're a slave holder. There's no slavery. Okay. Yes, there are homes. Uh, like a sharecropper kind of deal. Yes, that's what I was asking. Are they sharecroppers? I mean, I really feel like I'm backpedaling the history with these words, you see, and, and, you're, and you are automatically taking, taking the wrong perspective. Okay? Well, we don't have such things in Pittsburgh. I'm not familiar. I would I have to be honest with you. Mr. G Guess, maybe if you could just stray away from our conversations about all the sharecroppers. I am indeed a Martin uh, Southern gentleman, and I have uh, fair and legitimate businesses, you see. I do indeed pay them. Well, if you say so, I mean, what sort of business is it? Well, it's a thousand acres of property. Oh. Well, that sounds like quite a lot. There are plenty of uh, spaces to house my employees, you see. That is absolutely correct. Uh, maybe not mention the employees either. We even, uh, out here in the, in the fields, we do indeed have Wi-Fi service. Oh, really? On the fields? In the fields, you have Wi-Fi? Is that a thing? It's a very complicated process getting that set up with a Mr. Elon Musk, I tell you that. Uh, the Starlink. Oh, the Starlink, yes, I've heard of this. It was very complicated. Way over my head as a, a you know, engineer, I am not an engineer. I'm a simple southern farmer, really, to be truthful. Well, I mean, don't undersell yourself, sir. I mean, I'm sure there's complications involved. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit about some of the things that you grow on the farm and what you might get out of it. What sort of crops are they sharing with you? Corn. Oh, corn, yes. Mm -hmm, yes, sir. Corn for mash. Oh, really? You know, the white lightning mash. Well... A and we do sell a bit uh, to the public markets. You were speaking of champagne earlier. Now you're talking about moonshine, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, we do have a little sugar cane crop. You have sugar cane. Really? Yes, sir. That is also mainly for the mash making. Oh, I see. Do you make rum? Mash for the corn liquor, the, the white lightning, and the moonshine, oh. as they do well, and I, say. I believe uh, liquor made from sugar cane is called rum. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure why he's talking about white lightning. I just like to have a beer now and then, but... I could go for a bit of white lightning, if that's what you call. I'm just not sure if this is relatable. Are there any other animals on the farm? Oh, yes, sir. Well, I do have several, several head of cattle. Oh, yes, the lovely cow. Mm -hmm. That is one of America's finest yes, agricultural products. One of our finest, indeed. Yes, sir. Is that his Got a bunch of cows. Did I leave it on again? I just keep forgetting. I'm sure our listeners would want to know, what's the life like being a farmer? 
I imagine being a farmer on your own is enough to sometimes make you lonely enough to weep. Is that true? Is that the case? Mm-hmm. Yes, well, now that is positively delightful. Question, I thank you for asking me that. I'm confused. Has it been a long time since you've had a date? Uh, yes, it has been a long time since uh, I have taken a cordial hand of a young lady and walked the property limits, you know, that's why how we do a little courting in the South. Uh, no, no, mm-hmm. no. I like to sit on the sit on the front porch with a with a mint julep, because you know I am a fancy Southern gentleman, as you can plainly uh, see. Yes, sitting on the porch is is great. I like sitting on the porch. Excuse me, Pacific Asians. Maybe you could ask him a little bit more about dating and the dating life. I mean, that might be interesting to some of the listeners. Taking some cues from my line producer, uh, have you looked on uh, many fish in the sea, perhaps? Or I think there is a social dating site for farmers. Perhaps that would be helpful. Well, I do not believe that I, I like your tone, mister. What, what are you trying to imply? That you're a farmer and you might want to get laid? Uh, or, oh, pardon me. I mean, <laughs> that you're a farmer and you might want to meet a young lady that... Uh, maybe we could talk a little bit more about are there animals there on the farm? Perhaps we should stay away from dating. Yes. Is it true that sometimes there can be spurious events there on the farm? Uh, you know, I hear that sometimes when you have animals, you have a special type of relationship with the animal, a kinship, if you will. Oh, no, sir, I've never once fucked a sheep. I promise you that now. That, sheep, is, that, is, that, is, that is too far, sir. I, I, I think oh, you should well, uh, ask me. better questions. I, I was just inquiring about your approach, that's all, sir. Well, was... No, I've never fucked a cow either, sir. Yes, I don't even... Excuse me, Mr. Guest? Yes, a uh, cow again. I, I was just hoping maybe we could stay away from talking about... Having any kind of intercourse with farm animals? I I don't think that that's appropriate for our demographic. Now, Yins, just if you could stay away from the talk about the animals, and that would be better. Well, I do have cats. Oh, you grow cattle as well. They're for beef. I see. Yes. Like I said, several heads of cattle. Oh. Uh, there is, in fact, a slaughterhouse on the property for, for personals, uh, you know, because... Well, that's... Well, I do sell cows live. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear that you are able to raise them and sell them while they're alive, but it's interesting that you would have a uh, a butcher on site. Motherfucker, what just happened? Excuse me, Sir Carol, again, if you could just avoid from... Yes, your mic's still on. This still recording. I, I don't even know what the hell's going on in here anymore. Yeah, yeah, well, we're still recording. Uh, y- yes, sir. Oh, yes, you're speaking to the microphone there. Oh, we, well, there is some technical difficulties um, with your equipment. Are sir. you sure? I mean, I can hear you clearly in my headphones. Uh... I am obviously in your building, in your studio. Oh, sir, I'm here to help in any way that I can. Pacific Asia, it's, it's not really his place to help out with the equipment. That's more on my end of things. D- if, d- if you wouldn't mind, can I adjust the mic? Is there on your corner? <laughs> I, I, I have driven a long way. Oh, really? Yes, it was It was a very long way, a uh, couple thousand miles to be here today. I mean, Pittsburgh's not that far from the south, sir. We're just a few states. In my stretch. Oh, really? Silverado limousine, white tinted windows, large wheels, very loud exhaust. I see. I'm sure you heard us pull up. Hey, yes, why is talking mm-hmm. about that? Have you ever done an interview before? Well, I, I never. You never? I, I have never. Uh, actually, been on an interview before, and I appreciate this opportunity. I can tell. We're happy to have you. Thank you for coming. Very sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, God bless you. Oh, we appreciate you being here. Bless your heart for having me. I, I, I'm glad to be here. We're, we're so happy, yes. He seems to want to talk about his clothing. It's very true. Maybe that would be a topic. You could have a conversation with him about Pacificatius. 
Well, I suppose I could. I'm just not so sure, Gerald, that this is the type of thing that our audience is really looking for. I mean, we're going for topical discussions on the true topics of society. We're trying to face things like the drug, the fentanyl epidemic, and the pandemic, and- He just keeps talking about how fancy he is. Okay, well, I suppose I can try. Well, it's time for another commercial break. We'll be back after this commercial break with more important questions answered by our self-appointed fancy southern gentleman. <laughs> now we will take a break for some advertisements. Please support our sponsors. Just imagine, this could be your advertisement. Please reach us at liongoatpodcast at gmail.com to provide sponsorship. And now, back to the show. Please introduce yourself, interviewee. Please reveal your identity to our listeners. Yes, sir. I am indeed a fancy southern gentleman. I, yes, that's quite obvious. I would say that there is a certain eloquence and etiquette to your manners, sir. Mm -hmm. Even though you, you are racist, I can tell. That is, in fact, right. But clothes do not make the man. Oh, I... wholeheartedly. I, I do agree. Fancy. It's not a thing of the past. That's right. No, I was just... You dress for respect. That's, that's, that's really what it's about. So could you please just tell us a little bit more about the clothing that you're wearing? It looks like you have a nice cane or something there. Yes, sir. I, I'm indeed dressed in a top hat. Yes. And tails. And I do possess it. Look at the, look at the knob on this hair cane, young man. Look at it. Shiny. Shiny and gold. Oh, yes, it appears to have a, a fancy lion's head there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, and large around it would knock you down if I had to. Oh. The really cool well, thing is that if I turn it like this, oh, well, it's a sword you, inside, you see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Please don't yeah. be, Oh, All right, incognito, that's right. Oh, well, let's not resort to violence with your walking aids, sir. Mm -hmm. No, I... Uh, I don't think that would be advisable at all. I mean, it's not eloquent to mm -hmm. threaten violence in an interview. We are mm -hmm. we are both gentlemen mm -hmm. here. Well, I'm not really sure about all that. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I need to interject. Uh, yes, uh, if you could just please uh, relinquish your weapon. No. Uh, no, uh, I, I believe I will. Hold on to your cane for the rest of I'm not really. Of your life. I think that I really need to hold on to that for you, if you don't mind. Yes, sir. I'm, again, I'm, I'm not a sir, sir. I, you know I'm just kidding. No, it's a, uh, yes, yes, if you don't mind, we'll just set that over here. Yeah, just let it over there and uh, if yes, could please. Yes, sir. I don't know, it's just some sort of jack off. He thinks he can come in here and just talk about whatever he wants. Treat us this way. Oh, is my mic still on? Shit. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about the town that you're from, or the state that you're from, or this lovely accent that you have. I mainly keep to the myself down there in the... In the uh, in in the lower countries of uh, not well, we got a big state with that two E's and the Tennessee. Yes, that's not that far. You know, I'm just kidding. Go Vols, yeah. No, I'm not really a sports man. Uh, uh, Southern gentlemen do not in dabble in the sweaty games. What sort of game? Oh, do you mean the football? Well, no, sir. Well, um, no, sir. I would think that farming would be a rather sweaty affair. Am I wrong about that? No, sir, but, you know. Are there any other animals there on the farm with you? I like that dog. He's a hoot. I got one that like him. You have a dog? Is is that what you're saying? You ha I have. I got, got several hounds at the house. Blue healers. You have a canine. Yes, yeah, I see. Now, could you tell me, are these animals that you hunt with? Is that why you have the blue healer? Cone dogs, yes. I thought that that was a hunting dog. Mm -hmm. And do you hunt with the sword cane? Mm, yeah, yes, yeah, well. Usually a shotgun. A shotgun? That, that's right. I see. Mm -hmm. And do they call it a shotgun because it shoots? Bird shot, you know, maybe. Yes. M maybe, maybe some little heavier, heavy grade. And what do you do with the animals that you're hunting? Well, I eat them, of course. 
The dogs. I had a whole reason to go hunting, son. You gotta feed your family. The dogs? I wouldn't recommend eating dogs. I think that's illegal in several states, if it's not illegal in all states. You know what I'm saying? Not all the food uh, you're going to need in, in the future is it, uh, going to come uh, from the supermarket. Oh, yes, of course, yes. Uh, we have pride ourselves on being in touch with nature here and the lovely animals of the woods and where our foods come from and making sure that we're supporting local farmers Local suppliers, and that all of our lovely treats that we have for the guests are locally sourced, and you know they support the farmers of the area. I think, I think in the coming times that you actually may have to resort to hunting, uh huh, or eating the things you find out there in the and and in the woods. Well, yes, I mean if you... mm -hmm. it's probably going to be radiated animals because you know i think there's a nuclear fallout going to happen i believe there's some sort of nuclear facility in tennessee near knoxville i think but i'm not sure that fallout is a concern and, and there is uh, uh, several uh bunkers oh are you a prepper sir well i, well, I shouldn't divulge this uh, you know for, for my family's safety oh. That's good. And of course, uh, my co-workers, because I'm not an inhumane employee at all. No, sir. Not sure why you would mention that. Perhaps you meant employer? Yes, sir. Is, is... Well, that's right. Oh. No, sir. I, I swear that is uh, not true at all. Oh, but you were just saying that you were an employer. It's, it's a lot of property, and I, and I swear it is, honestly. It seems like the interviews that we're having lately, they just sort of ramble on without any sort of prompting of the questions. Yes, I, I know, Pacificatius. We've been trying to uh, bring a wider demographic in, you know. We're just trying to get some of the common men on... Um, just so we can relate a little more to the audience out there. No, we're just trying to get it out. Okay, I understand. We'll make sure that the next guest is a little more professional. Hi, Mr. Guest. It's Carol again. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I don't really understand what's going on. Yes. Why Why you keep having all, all, all these technical give, get difficulties, sir? Yes, yeah, still not a sir. Oh. <laughs> well, I still was... don't understand what your concern is. You're speaking to the microphone. It's just that thing there right in front of your face, you see. Well, <laughs> And as you speak into the microphone, uh, we record your voice. I can hear you recording just fine. Oh, we're having a little bit of trouble with the accent. <laughs> perhaps, well, perhaps you could talk a little clear. Ridiculous, huh? Would that be possible? Ridiculous, young man, I swear. If you could just talk a little clear in the mic? No, no sir. And I don't understand why you don't understand English. I mean, Southern English is it's pretty clear English. Gentleman's English, as we like to call it. Oh, you can speak with whatever accent or vernacular that you prefer here on droll interviews we're happy to accept all kinds yeah of... well no we're southern we're, we're spell color with c-l-o r you know not a u like like those uh red coats that's right i'm not sure have you ever been on a radio show before sir oh that's no no that's... have you ever listened to the radio have you listened to the radio? Are you, are you familiar with podcasts? Is, is that something that maybe you know That's about? not the English that they speak over there no? in England. No, sir. That, they, no. Uh, that is uh, colonial English. We, we, we ain't got no time for that. Uh, British English, we, you know. Well, I hope you could just maybe wait until Pacificatius asks you a question, and then you can respond in a way that, that feels right. You see, I'll ask you questions, and then you would answer the questions. Uh, maybe once. Maybe, maybe once. Uh, we're soccer ball. I see. Now, being a gentleman from the South, there is a certain air that goes along with being a gentleman from the South. Uh, those are rumors and speculations, mostly. Uh, I have, I have uh, not ever once had sexual relations. Well, of harm, animal. I have told you this repeatedly this evening. And, and well, no, that is, uh, I don't believe you have. I haven't asked about your 
encounters with bestiality. That's not generally a topic that we discuss here on Droll Interviews. So. Sorry, I am so very sorry. I just have to interject again, if you don't mind. Please, again, if we could not talk about sex with the farm animals, that would be great. Oh, I know. I believe he was referring to uh, his previous comments about the sharecroppers. I, I do not. There's a history there. And I just wondered, you know, some people say heritage, not hate. How would you feel about that? Did you have family on either side of... The Civil War, uh, perhaps you could tell us about your ancestors and how that heritage follows you in your current life. Oh, no, I, I would, I, I did not take sides in that, sir. That, that, that war was several hundred years ago, and, and I had nothing to do with that. Well, I was curious about that. I mean, you did say that you live on a manor. No. On a plantation, and I believe by proximity, it might imply that you are on a specific side of well, that, the... that, that is not true. Not... That surprises me, but if you could now, I'd like to shift focus to the modern culture of the South. How is the culture of the South affected today from this legacy of brutal racism in the past? And how does that affect your social scene? Not all uh, Southern people uh, are, are, are indeed uh, Heathers. What? No, uh, I'm not sure you heard me correctly. I was just asking a... No, well, you... Heathers or... No, Southern Bells. There's several. I've known several Southern Bells named Heather. I did not mean to imply anything about Christian Bale movies or... Yeah, or... I, I know who... We'll try to get him back in line. There's this history of the white man treating people of other races as animals there in the South. Does that go on today, or has that been transcended by a more modern approach and understanding and appreciation of humanity? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Black hairs. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Tight booties, mm -hmm. yes, sir. Well, I was just asking if you yourself were involved in, uh... Well, I can't help that. I mean, those are, you know, uh, stereotypes, basically, set forth by by the uneducated, uh, propagated by, yes, sir, by the uneducated, and, and quite, frankly, quite frankly, the unintelligent. I, I'm... Hi, Mr. Guest. Uh, perhaps we could go to a lighter topic. Would you be comfortable talking about your dating life? I've heard that there are farmer-focused dating sites, uh, Christian farmer-focused dating sites like Mini Fish in the Sea or uh, Farmer Book. Uh, what is that uh, farmer dating site again? Perhaps someone there could look it up. Uh, Farmer dating site. What? It, what is it again? Um. Yes. Uh, uh. Farmers only, of course. Yes. 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 Uh. Farmer singles. Yes. It, it, have you tried any of these farmer centric dating sites? I... No. Not a farm animal. I have told you this several times. Okay. Well, I mean, female lady friend. You know, Homo sapiens, I sir. Guess, sir. If you could. Yes. Sir. We really are trying to reach the biggest demographic that's possible, and, and there's just not that many people out there that we know about that like to talk about farm animals or... I, I don't really care what you uh, engage in sexual activity with, sir. I, I don't care. I, myself, I, I like a good southern woman. Mm-hmm. You know, and it really shakes my peaches. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that's fine, whatever, you know. Uh, uh, oh, I know, sir. Not interested, really. I have no real interest in your personal... I was just wondering if you were ever on those farmer dating sites, that's all. I haven't, never. And, and I don't know that I would. Uh, I'd be afraid of falling off the wings, really. Uh, no, I'm not sure I heard you. I, I... I, I think you 
just talking about some jumbo that he got down the giant echo. Wait, uh... No, it's unclear to me. You're right, we are running short on time. Now we will take a break for some advertisements. Please support our sponsors. Just imagine, this could be your advertisement. Please reach us at liongoatpodcast at gmail.com to provide sponsorship. And now, back to the show. Welcome back to another evening of droll interviews with Persipacacious Thompson. <gasps> oh, okay. Well, I heard an anecdote of a friend of mine. He was on one of those dating sites, and he found the prettiest farmer that he'd ever seen, and he took her out for a nice meal, and you know what she did? She spent three hours showing him her combine. <laughs> yeah, can you? Oh, that's, uh, a funny, yes. that's a funny antidote, sir. Can you believe that was her idea of a romantic evening? Uh, mildly entertaining. I do believe it. Uh, uh, that, that, that is, that, that, if I was, that had happened to me is what I'm saying. I would probably shit my pants. If you were on one of the former dating sites, you would, mm-hmm. you would release feces into your drawers, sir? Uh, that's very scary. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. This is a family show, mm-hmm. and we try not to talk with those words. Hey, if you could, just let's avoid any expletives if, if possible, okay? Yeah, miss them. Is that, is that true? Is that, is that what actually happened to you, man? No, 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 not at all. No, no, nothing like that has ever happened to me. I don't believe I would admit it, even if it had. Well, that is very nice. That is very nice to hear that, that you did come through that on the other side, safe and uh, secure. Well, that may be a little wiser for wear if, uh, if, 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 yeah, if you understand the expressions. Excuse me, Mr. Guest, if you are indeed up for restroom. We do have a bathroom. Yes, sir. Over there. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I just wanted to make sure that you were comfy. Yes, yes, that does. Okay. No, I was just going to ask if you could give us some tips about purchasing seeds in advance for the farm. Well, I am indeed uh, dressed, as you can plainly see, as I obviously have been over a few times now, and I don't understand why we keep coming back to this. No, I'm sorry. I, you, uh, you must have misunderstood. Uh, we weren't asking about your claws. Top hat, yes, sir. It is great. We weren't really interested in your top hat. Or any of those sorts of things. Yeah, it does fit. It's a tailor-made, Not, just for the size no, of my we, head. It probably wouldn't fit you, so... Uh, yes, yes, we have some stores that uh, that sell those types of clothing. Oh, I'm, I'm sure if you would like them to, they could uh, please. take your hat and put it away in the coat closet for you. Yes, can, yeah. Yeah, yes, yes, can. Would you like that? Please don't uh, touch that. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh. Oh. Okay. okay. It's unprofessional, I know. Yes, whatever makes you more comfortable. If we could get to the first question of the interview, uh, now that we've introduced ourselves, I would ask, do you always dress this way when you come to these radio interviews, sir? Yes, sir. I do wear tails everywhere I go, yes, sir. And what is that, uh, nice, sir? What's that invention that you have there around your neck? This is a, a bowler, a bowler tie, yes, sir. A bowler tie. I can see as yes, a bowler tie around your neck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it looks like a little rope on, uh, on a pulley, yes, sir. And that's what it looks like. Do you always dress this way when you come to a radio interview? Well, I mean, it's stylish, you see. It's cool. Uh, well, yes, uh, I mean, I suppose a little bit, maybe. Is uh, that used around the farm, maybe, to help you lift things, uh, that sort of rope around you? Yes, sir. Hey, huh? Mm-hmm. And I see you've got some, uh, is that uh, some type of him? Embellishments, there. Look at his cufflinks. Yes, sir. Mm, shiny gold. Yeah. Oh, I see. Uh, you like to wear your initials in public? Is... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That does have my initials on it. Mm-hmm. Fancy Southern gentleman. That's right. That's true. Is that because you sometimes forget your name? <laughs> no, no. This that was perfect. That was perfect. I'm sorry. Just a little witticism. I apologize. No, it wasn't too much. Not at all. Stereotypes, basically, set forth by by the uneducated. Well, yes, generally stereotypes are propagated by the uneducated. I can't. I, I can't. wouldn't 
imply that you yourself would do such a I thing. I can't, and I will not, sir. Well, that's good. Uh, yes, you shouldn't propagate stereotypes. Well, don't forget now, you, you invited me here, oh, and, yes, and I did indeed uh, come a long way. I mean, it wasn't 2,000 miles, but I... Yes, sir. In a stretch, Silverado Cadillac. Well, I mean, I'm sure that wasted lots of gas and polluted the environment. Uh, no, not a Cadillac. That's not, you got me frustrated. I don't forgot what I drove up here. I do have a Cadillac. Cadillac convertible, cherry red, cherry red, beautiful but thing. we are happy to have you here. Yes, sir. Excuse me, sir. Uh -huh. It does indeed, in fact, actually have long horns. On the front end of that thing, that's right. Oh, mm -hmm. That's in I case see. I got to ram somebody like you, young man. I don't like your attitude. Well, okay. I, uh, I mean... Well? I'm not sure that that would do much damage to my vehicle. I mean, specifically the horns of the cattle, but perhaps if you were in a bullfight with your vehicle... Uh, they're, they're not here nor there, all right? I am so sorry to interrupt once again. It is good. Just try. Just lower the energy. We're really just trying to go for a nice, enjoyable conversation vibe. That, that's more what we're looking for here. We, we're just trying to get the uh, audience engaged. Perhaps you'd be willing to tell us some of the old tall tales, if you will. Maybe in the vein of a Tom Sawyer, or a Huck Finn, or a Samuel Clemens. Perhaps you could tell us some stories of growing up in your youth in the southern culture, and what that was like. Did you play with your friends outside a lot when you were a small boy in the South? Yes, sir. There is a creek, and I do play in it sometimes. I have as a young man, as a child, growing up. Mm -hmm, I've kissed a lady or two in that very creek. That's fine. I, uh... I, I'm not sure why he's talking about a creek. Yes, sir. There are crawdads. Oh, really? They, there are indeed crawdads, and definitely copperheads and rattlesnakes. My oh, God, they will bite your ass and you be dead, I promise you. Oh, I see. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, it sounds like the dating sites are doing a little better for you than... No, no, no. There aren't any of those there. Are you dating these creatures as well? well I don't really know what a animal like that would be doing in the South, to be honest. Are sir. these the ladies that you were kissing? <laughs> that, no ladies. That would be fun to I see, see what happened. Mm -hmm. There's people all around. Uh... Let loose in the public place. No, sir. It's not like I was asking about the Yeti or Sasquatch hey, you... or... Oh, my goodness, your, your whole sense of humor here, huh? Uh, yes, we do try. I mean, you did get them into joke. It is called droll interviews. We, we do have a sense of humor. Could be fun, yes, sir. It could indeed. Kissing a lady, I think that would be advisable, mm -hmm. yes. No, sir, I've, I've never done that. Oh, I do think it would be advisable, yes. Um, I, yeah, I think I might like to try it once. Do you have any anecdotes? Perhaps a little bit more about... How you spent time on the farm when you didn't have as many channels on television or you didn't have access to the internet or these modern conveniences. You know, yeah, as that old saying goes, you know, I try anything once. You know. The things I like, I tried them twice, you know. <laughs> and I can just imagine on the farm there would be all sorts of horses and perhaps goats or chickens or roosters. Is that the sort of animal that you were working with there? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That's true. Oh, I just thought it would be a bit comical to play with roosters or chickens. That would be something normal that you might encounter. Now, I don't really know about uh, whether or not any of this is, is working for you, sir. Uh, you know, man. Uh, Excuse me, sir. You're still not a sir. If you could just wait until precipitations ask the next question, and then he'll bring the humor. You don't have to bring the humor. I don't... No, that's just a common misinterpretation of how the radio shows work. You bring the humor in that, and you just wait for the questions. Now, I don't really know if my uh, uh, accent is fancy, southern, and gentlemanly enough for you, sir. Yeah, I, I know. We talk a little different up here. It's the Pittsburgh. It gets inside you, and you just can't get it out. Is that... 
the uh, accent that the other locals there in your town speak with? I mean, it is the true voice that I do and speak with every day. I speak. Your accent's fine. I don't have any issue with your accents. You can talk to my mama. I would be glad to speak. I'll put my hand on that family Bible. I will indeed. Well, and I'll what, shoot you with the family I mean, 12 gauge. Perhaps if you I've should, got to, yes, uh, sir. I mean, again, there's no need to threaten violence here. You're amongst friends. Uh, no, uh, I, can, I can please. We need for you not to mention weapons on the air. Well, no, I don't keep the 12 gauge on me, sir. It's very important. We lose our license. There's other people involved here. If you could just understand that. And what I've got right here is a Colt 45, yes, sir. I hear tell of Colt 45. I believe I saw a gentleman on the street corner with one of those. It was in a brown paper sack or something like that. I hear that alcohol can be quite bad for a person. It certainly doesn't seem to have given any of those gentlemen that are drinking it on the street initiative. No, not, not that. It's not an alcoholic malt liquor, sir. This is a forty-five revolver. Oh, I see. Uh, and it will shoot no you dead. Reason to bring mm-hmm. weapons yes, sir. into the studio, sir. Please, uh, uh, could you please put that, that down? That is hot lead coming at you very, very fast, and I don't think you want to catch no, it. No, no, you know please. I, mean? I, I am a peaceful man. I, I <laughs> please don't. It, it's just my sense of humor, you see. You don't want to catch a case of lead poison, now, do you, son? No, sir. No, 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 I, I no. said, son, do no, you? not at all. I... You're absolutely right, Pacificatius. You're absolutely right. This is in court for, and we're going to have to do something about it. I just wanted to have an interview with you. I'm sorry you feel like the equipment's not up to your standards. Oh, no, I did and... not think so at all. Do you keep these weapons as a form of self-defense? But, yeah, well, that is probably what well, that would ha- that is what should happen to any any burglar. Oh, I see. It's for protection. Mm, yeah. What about the consequences of your actions, sir? Well, you gotta ask yourself. It's dangerous to have weapons in the house, and what about the consequences to the person that you might shoot? Have you considered that you could ruin their uh, lives? It is not that I I value my things more than I value your life. Uh, that's good, but that is a reasonable argument. It, it is the fact that you value my things uh, more than your own life, you oh, see. No, no, I'm afraid I didn't quite understand I can if you could just let's not mention the weaponry on the radio show, okay? It's it's just not good for our listenership. Are you a self-defense expert? Or? I mean, I can't help the fact that it's generational money, but you should get off your ass and earn what you want, sir. Oh, I see. Do you have lots of possessions in your household that you feel that need your protection? Yes, sir. Is that from the plantation? I mean, yes, sir. Most farmers don't make much income. I do have uh, so much money that my great-grandchildren will not be able to spend it all. Can you tell me about your family legacy and how far your family goes back in your southern culture, in your small town? This is because of the things, uh, the the pride and the work ethic that my my uh, great-great-great-grandfather did in stealing me. Oh, really? His name, in fact, was Ernest. Like the importance of being Ernest? I mean, that's one of my favorite plays. Yes, sir. And I assume you grew up on the farm and you had chores and things like this that you needed to do? To this day, I, I, I do I do everything. They say I am up into ass crack of dawn. Yes, sir. I'm so sorry to interrupt. I heard you say the A word, and we just try to avoid that here. Uh, you know, a uh, penny for a pound. Yeah, if you just couldn't avoid using that type of language. Yes, sir. I'm up for the rooster crows, as I say. You know, the early bird gets that worm. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Well, early to bed, early to rise, I suppose, and all that. It seems like farmers throughout history have always awakened early. Maybe that's because they have so much work to do before the darkness comes. I've never quite understood why the farmers who are self-employed insist upon getting up at the crack of dawn. Could you answer that question, perhaps? 
You seem well equipped with the abilities to speak. <laughs> the early bird, early bird gets the worm, and definitely the the the, the prettiest hen. Perhaps, baby, you could talk a little bit more about farm life without talking about the uh, the sexual relationships with the animals. That that might work. Now we will take a break for some advertisements. Please support our sponsors. Just imagine, this could be your advertisement. Please reach us at liongoatpodcast at gmail.com to provide sponsorship. And now, back to the show. Oh, I see you've mentioned chickens. So there were chickens around. I thought you said before that there weren't such an animal in the South. We don't keep any, any foxes in this house. Perhaps I misunderstood you. Uh, so uh, you're a chicken man, is that the case? That's right. Did you grow chickens on the farm? Mm, several. Does a chicken come from a seed like uh, corn? In fact, I have indeed made a whole industry oh, of, of producing eggs. I, uh, you, uh, you mentioned before that you might have some interest in real estate. Is it possible? Maybe we could talk a little bit no, about that, that. That was my idea right there. Right now, my dad said uh, that he he thought it, but that that is not true. You see. Well, that's why it's got my name on the building. Your name's on the building? Yeah. yeah. And now I assume that this uh, plantation is your inheritance, is that correct? My name on the deed, yes, sir. Mm, that's right. Oh, I see. I do, in fact, own that one, too. What, in fact, is your name, sir? You you haven't introduced yourself to our audience. Would you be willing to? Mm, there's several. I see, and is land ownership one of the primary means of your wealth? Uh, uh in fact, around this and uh, this and right here, and if you're not careful, young man, I'm going to snatch up the property that you're sitting in right now. Mm, yes, sir. Well, this is a uh, radio station, sir. I mean, I'll I'm... be owning that, too. Mm. Would you consider a property of this nature to be of quite some value? And then I will, in fact. Raise the rent until you cannot afford to live in your mother's basement. That's right. I will indeed, well, young man. Well, my dear parents have passed away. I'm I'm sorry to say, so that's not really an option for me, but... but I do not care about... You uh, don't care? <laughs> I understand. That's... I would be glad to tell you uh, who we rent the building from, if you're interested in ownership, as long as you... Well, give us a fair lease. I, I'm sure we could work something out, but let's not speak about business on the radio. Yes, Let, we'll, uh, we'll try to redirect uh, here if we could. Pacificatious, perhaps maybe you could just ask one of the questions that you have there in front of you. Uh, Gerald, our, our guest seems a bit, um, perhaps he's a bit intoxicated. Is it possible that he's intoxicated? Maybe, maybe you could ask him. He seems a bit out of sorts. If you could just really, really try. Okay? No, I I don't think it'd be appropriate for me to ask that question. Oh, yeah, well, I do indeed. Are you indeed intoxicated now at this moment? That would be my question. Do indeed like a little uh, corn lick, as I say. Uh, Seems like you just kind of continue to talk without being prompted, and it's somewhat confusing. I mean, we like to have a light-hearted show. Here on Droll Interviews. I do indeed. I uh, think what Pacificasis is trying to let you know is you just keep interrupting that when, when he's trying to ask a question. Oh, uh-huh. oh, you know, you know. Well, well, we're trying to get you to just to. No, yeah, you just need to take up a, a short break in between so that he can ask the question. Yes, sir. Okay, would that work? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Was your family influenced? Heavily by the prohibition, I hear that there were many southern families on southern farms that had to resort to other forms of making an income in the Great Depression, and that helped many of them succeed in keeping their plantations after certain unethical forms of employment were outlawed. Is that relatable to you at all? There was a time that I, I was, in fact, in, in, in Alabama. Okay, you went to Alabama, a neighboring state, to your south. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was not involved with with that particular okay adventure. Mm-hmm. In, in time or history, is that that's a, that's a bit before me, young man. Uh, how old, in fact, do you think that I am? I am not one hundred and seventy-five years old, as you obviously 
think I oh, am Well, Cody. no, of course, as you would understand, the prohibition was uh, merely in the 1920s, but I would have assumed it might have been your father or your grandfather. I did indeed drive my daddy to drinking because of that hot rod, Lincoln. It was fast, motherfucker. I'll tell you what, whoo, gold dogging, fast as damn vehicle in three counties, that's right. That's exactly what it was. I promise you that. The Civil War. I, I think you're still talking about the Civil War. Is that That correct? doesn't make any sense. How, how would I be here, standing right here, if I was 175 years? Yes, I do have a cane, but that's not because I'm 175 years old, son. That, that is fashion statement. That's right. Mm -hmm. That is in fact. That's all yes, it is. Yes, I can see that you have a cane, and you like to talk about it. Is it a particular matter of pride that... You have a cane, sir? The latest like it when you lean. You don't understand what I'm saying, you know what I mean? You would know that if you had an ounce of self-respect and southern pride, sir. Well, no. Being from Pittsburgh, I don't suppose I have any southern pride. I do choose to live here in the Iron City. It is rather nice when you're not coughing from the pollution. That, that is your problem, young man. We have many offerings, just like most other large cities in America. I mean, it shouldn't... Shouldn't be doing that, young man. You'll see, it's done it again. That's like every damn seven minutes now. I don't understand what's going well, on here. Again, I've tried to explain that it, it seems to be working quite well. I can hear you speaking clearly. Um, well, it's uh, your shitty, shoddy, your shoddy uh, recording equipment, sir. I've had the technicians take a look at your microphone a few times, and everything looks fine. I... No, I, I'm afraid that we can't find any sort of issue with the mic. It's, it seems to be working and everything. It seems to be okay. I, I'm not sure why he keeps complaining. Well, I do believe. I do declare, sir. Huh? He can hear me? Yeah. I really need you to mute my mic. And here's mix. <laughs> I know, but if you don't hear my mic in his mix, he's gonna hear everything that I say, and then he's gonna know that he's messing up the show. <laughs> I know it's not that important. I don't know how to make this drive. This is modern day. Uh, Again, you just speak into it. the microphone and. Uh, uh, no, no, please don't push any buttons here in the studio. I am pushing please buttons. Please don't, no, no. I put it in no, uh, There's no, there's no reason to do that. Yeah, I have a need. So. Yes, y yes, there's no reason uh -oh. to pick up what, the microphone. Oh. No, I ain't work. Well, it doesn't matter. I'll just put it down. All right, look. Well. Just have such an attitude. I don't know why he's got such an attitude, this guy. I don't know. Is it on again? Really, you've got to mute it next time. Every time, just every time I talk. Why is this confusing for you? Just forget about it. Just forget about it. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice little trinket gadget to play with you got. Uh, oh, I see. Well, you know. Uh, um, a fun little fidget spinner as a, as, as a kid's day. If you need something to occupy your hands with, yeah, and I would oh, well. insist that you perhaps play with your bolo tie. That that would be very nice. I don't really like to fidget my time away, but, you know, I, I'm a busy man. I like to work with my hands off. Sipicacious, if you don't mind, uh, he did just want to say one more th He was hoping that you would ask him about his vehicle. Eh? That is yeah, indeed he true. Like, he likes to talk about his car. Well, he mm, likes to, he just yes, like, uh, yes, I don't know why he just likes it so much, so... Would you mind? I, I really hate to ask, but would you mind just asking him one more time about his car? It seems like you take a great amount of pride in your vehicle. Is that part of your southern heritage or your southern culture? Or is it something that you're particularly proud of? Uh, yes, sir. Could you uh, mention what type of... Stretched uh, uh, Chevy Silverado limo limousine, yes, sir. Tinted windows, mm -hmm. and it's white. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, you've mentioned a couple of times now. Uh, yes, sir. You know, it surprises me that you wouldn't choose to fly. Uh, perhaps there are airports in your area. Do they have airports in Mississippi? I, I've never been, unfortunately. I'm so sorry <laughs> to say. Uh, well, that would be ridiculous, young man. I didn't mean to sound out of touch. Why would I fly? On uh, um, my private jet down here. Well, no, I. it's not that far from Tennessee. And I then drive my 
Chevy Silverado stretch limousine from that rinky-dink ass airport y'all got around here. I mean, Pittsburgh has one of the finest international airports, sir. I don't know what you mean that it's rinky dinky. I'm I'm not sure I'm familiar with the term, but no, I just know. Well, we've had some fun today. Thanks again for coming on to the show. I guess it, it, it has been a, a a good, pleasant time. I, I, I thank you for inviting me. And yeah, you are absolutely right. I do believe that. Uh, uh, yeah, we have run out of time, and uh, you know, I'm a very busy man. And I thank you for squeezing me in, into this schedule that I have. Thank you again. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Well, I do have to get on to the airport in my stretch Chevy Silverado limousine. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. The white is a difficult color to keep clean, but, uh, you know, I hand wash them. Oh, I see. Well, that's good. You don't have someone there on mm-hmm. the farm help you out. No, sir. Not my staff at all. I, I take care of my vehicles. Uh, does it get much of, well, I, I'd hate to say, but dirtiness from the cattle? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Glenn, are you familiar with how to get back to the airport? Do, would, would you be able to get there on your own? Well, no. Perhaps maybe you would like to take a long flight. Just a long flight out somewhere else. Well, you know, I like driving sights for him. For Mrs. Lovely. Mm-hmm. Perhaps have you considered taking an airplane to another country? Well, that is a, that is a very good uh, aspiration to have. Uh, I, I would, too, like to, like to see the old country. Mm-hmm. Oh, we perhaps travel back to Europe? Is that where your family heritage is from? Yeah, maybe one of them uh, pyramids. Right? They're pretty, pretty neat. I, I do think there's an ingenious uh, building technique right there. Mm. Well, the triangle is one of nature's most stable forms, I do believe they say. Yeah, well, well, of course. Oh, oh. Is that some sort of animal that you... Well, I do, I do, I do, I do believe it's time to go. That's what that... that that noise was. Uh, right? Yes, yes. You see the light there. We like to keep the interviews to 30 <laughs> minutes normally, and it's been very nice to have you. What is that sound, sir? That, that, Are you playing with the equipment again? That, that noise right there. You, you don't hear that? Well, it sounds like a scratching uh, are you sure? noise of some sort. Or, or... You don't hear that at all? You could just maybe avoid scratching when you're on the microphone. It, it really helps out with the audio. Well, obviously, it sounds like it, what it sounds like, young man. You can hear it, don't no, you? You can hear it. I know we can. It's not... I'm so sorry. I, I know I keep interrupting. and you, You've been so patient with us. If, if you just wouldn't mind, maybe don't scratch while you're on the, on the microphone. Stop messing with me, youngin. That that is a real thing. No, sir, I'm not crazy because I'm... Well, no, sir. I would never no. mean to imply that there was anything wrong with your mental health. Uh, are you in good mental health these days? Uh, oh, man, I don't oh, know. I see. You, you're not sure. Well, um, <laughs> I was... Well... Oh, my is... goodness. Now, I'll tell you what. Now, stop playing with me, young man. Jesus. No, again, it is... Uh, well, we we just have a sense of humor, you know. Man, get your damn technology under control now. I'm about to keep doing that. Hi, sir. Yes, it's, it's Carol again. i so sorry to interrupt, but if you could maybe I just hit the mute button there if you have some something that you need to scratch or... I, I don't know what I'm saying. I can't read without my damn readers. You know that. Well, no, you don't know that. Of course you don't. I know you're the interviewee. You, 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 that's why you're at. Yeah, I mean, I'm the interviewee, and you're the interviewer, and that's why you're asking all the questions. That's right. No, I'm trying uh, to... all it says is on air. That's just the on air sign there. It notifies people outside the studio that we're recording. All right, damn, know it again. Now, boy, what do you know? You could just wait until he asks the question. Simmer down. It's just your tone of voice, sir. Perhaps you'd be interested in talking more about. Where it is that you come from? We here in Pittsburgh, we, we sometimes wonder about the South. You know, we hear all kinds of rumors and, you know, the stereotypes and things like that. And maybe, maybe you could just get some of that out in the conversation. We'll take a brief break for some advertisements and hopefully you'll be able to find yourself 
a little more comfortable when we return to the show. Now we will take a break for some advertisements. Please support our sponsors. Just imagine, this could be your advertisement. Please reach us at liongoatpodcast at gmail.com to provide sponsorship. And now, back to the show. Okay. Now we're in the speed round. I remember growing up, I used to watch this television show. I believe it was called The Andy Griffith Show. And it was just so enjoyable to see the Southern charm. Do you relate at all to that television show? Well, that's true. Some do, some do say that I'm as kind as Andy Griffith. That's hilarious. Now, as I understand it, you come from a very small town. Oh, no, I do not live in that small of a town, though. No, sir. But there's more than, that, you know, a barber and, and a drunk and, and a deputy sheriff and my aunt. Yes, sir. I, a little bit more. There's a couple more people. And, yeah, I mean, the town is indeed named after my family. Your last name is Vicky. Way back. We are, yes, sir. Oh, oh, I see. Like Pittsburgh is named after the Pitts. It sure is the pits. He's so funny. He's just so freaky. Who is it? I told you about this turn off the microphone. And would you say that you still have a political interest in the town since it holds your namesake? Oh, I am not very political. I do not care uh, how they run that uh, city, as long as they uh, do not indeed bother me, you understand? I'm surprised I would have expected a man of your family standing to hobnob with the political sector, maybe play golf with the mayor or something like that. No, I do not know him. Uh, I wish I did, though. Uh, That would be nice. I see. You know, I wondered if perhaps your illegal moonshine operation was sanctioned by the police officers. Do you know the police chief? Uh, yes, I, I would like to play golf with that young man, too, yes. Um, oh, I, that, I see. Good. Is he a known golfer? Is, are you a golfer? Actual, factual, yes. Oh, I see. What's your handicap? I sometimes hit the round ball on the weekends. No, sir. No, sir. I, I pretty much keep to my, my, myself. I mean, there's oh. enough... Uh, oh, I see. Enough property, enough area uh, for me to keep to myself. Uh, well, with hunting and uh, fishing. Well, and, uh, I could see how you could have your own golf course if you had so many acres on your plantation. And so there on your farm, you grow corn. And yes, and, and of course, the, the corn and the cows, yes. Chickens and uh, yes. is it tobacco that you said? Uh, yeah, and the sugar cane. Well, it's quite rare, isn't it, to grow sugar cane in Tennessee? I mean, is the weather wet enough there? Usually it's on coastal states. Y- y- yes, sir. Oh, it is? Okay, well, uh, I suppose you must get rain in the fall and spring? No, no. Now, there's been a recent economical decline for the small farmer. Mm-hmm. Well, I do. And I'm not sure how much land you have, but would you say that you're affected by this decline for the small farmer? I do believe so, yes, well, I do declare. Do you believe that your farm is still economically viable? I wonder. I- I'm-, I'm wondering right now, uh, in this second, in this here moment of now, uh, just how long that uh, I can't indeed carry this out. Uh, the sugarcane plantation? Perhaps not calling it a plantation would help in the future. I mean, that might help you win your interactions. I mean, I'm surely to God. It, it, it's surely to God. It, it, it's got to end sometime. Oh, I didn't mean to insult your pride, sir. I just noticed that you have a certain level of dress, and I would assume that there's a certain type of lifestyle that one would need to keep up. Yeah, yes, I guess I, 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 I'm indeed. I am indeed a fancy southern gentleman. I told you this uh, four or five, seven times now. Uh, you can tell, of course, by the fact that I am indeed a... Uh, Wearing a, a, a top hat, a, a, a tails tuxedo. Yes, sir, they are very sharp and smoky gray. Yes, and again, I would repeat that the outfit does not make the man. So, you know, you might just reassess. You are correct, sir. It's more about personality. And, and I am carrying my sword cane <laughs> with a, yes, sir, the just big shiny ball please, on it. Knock your no, noggin, young. Please don't threaten the stop. Could you, could you please just, could you please just put all the weapons on the just give me all the weapons now. Get yourself together, sir. Again, not a man. All of the weapons. Now, have you got any of that under your, your jacket or something like that? Well, yeah, I'm, 
I take offense from that. And I don't, I don't think that we're going to need you for the rest of the MMP. I, I think we're going to have to ask you to leave. Yes, we're, we're going to, I'm sorry. That was the last time. We're going to have to ask you This is the interview. This is the end of the interview. Yes, yes, we are out of time. It's it's been so pleasant to have you here. Thank you. Yes, I mean that's fine. I'm glad you had me. I I promise I'm not very upset at all. We do want to say thank you so much for coming and being on the droll interviews. You've been such an excellent guest and. I really do appreciate taking this nice look into the farm life, the life of a southern gentleman, a fancy southern gentleman, and all of your anecdotes about your clothing and your vehicles and your weaponry and, yes, your your historical ties to... Uh, slaveholders, as uh, unethical as that sounds. But... I, I, I do enjoy uh, d- talking about, you know, uh, the things that we have discussed here today. I, I have I had a blast, young man. Uh, I do appreciate yes, you coming on the show, and uh, we hope that you have a, a wonderful evening. I will indeed, most certainly. And uh, we hope that you can find your way out. If... Uh, I, thank you for having just, me. Uh, just let it be. If you have any just trouble... Just you speak with Garrel. She'll help you out. She'll be happy to you. help you and our, our engineer. Yes, uh, he is available as well for you any assistance that you might yeah. have. Let me just show you the way out to the door to the parking lot. You can go to your long stretch car and you can take it back to the airport where you came from. Uh, no. And we're going to need you to go now, okay? Uh, no, no. Look, you've had your time. On the mic, the Pacific cases. There are, there are things to do out here. I'm afraid we're not going to ask you back. They are there now. Now we can't have any readers. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. That, that is in fact true. Again, yes, sir. I'm not a sir. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, look, here's the money that we promised, okay? No, no, well, I'm in thinking. It's a bottle of moonshine, just like you asked for. Well, now we have to import this step. We have to import this mm-hmm. special yes, right. I'm, 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 Thank you very much, I, sir. I know it's not the brand that you asked for. We couldn't find Johnny Walker. Oh, no, I, no. Um, thank you. Yes, sir, you, you have a lovely day, yes, sir. And you have a lovely day as well, sir. Thank you for being on Droll Interviews. I hope you have a safe trip back. And please do consider a more ecologically friendly vehicle. I would like to say thank you again to all of our listeners. This has been another interview of Droll Interviews with your host, Persipicacious Thompson. We hope that you have a lovely evening. We hope that you have a wonderful, splendiferous day. And we hope that you'll come back and join us again. Please reach out if you have any feedback on this discussion or any questions about our services. You can reach us at our mother production company, LionGoatPodcast at gmail.com. Please follow all our social media feeds. And once again, have a delightful evening. Look, we've, we've got to do some red up in here. We've got to get the sweep out and clean up the studio. I understand. I understand you're upset. Yeah. Well, you ought to just... You, you ought to just get in your car in that. I, I will just, indeed, you, most certainly. You just ought to just get in the car in that. I, I, I thank you for having look, me. If you can't find the way to the airport, you just go down. Look, you head like you're going downtown, right? You act like you're going down south, okay? Yeah, oh, yes, well, you, you are correct. No, I will definitely. Yes, and, and then when you see the light, you take a right man. Yes, sir. Oh, no. Look, you go past the giant eagle. Uh, no. No, the giant eagle. Uh, no, no. The grocery store. Yes, it's the grocery store, and it says giant eagle. Right on the, right on the side. Right on the side. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. That, that is, in fact, true. Yes, right on the side. Definitely, definitely. Look, I, I don't have a tire for you. I know you spill your coffee on yourself, but I don't have a tire. I'm all out of tires. No, well, I'm in thinking. Look, 
you skip your car and go downtown. And when you see the giant eagle, you turn right now. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. I'm, I'm, uh, thank you very much, It's right. gonna, you, you can't miss it. It's gonna see it. It's a, it's a giant airport. I, I know you're talking about the airport, saying it's not all there, but you can't miss it, sir. Yeah. Oh, no, I, okay. no. Thanks so much. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for being here now. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. You, you have a lovely day. Yes, sir. Right. I just can't wait to get home and get a, a nice beer to watch the Steelers game. Hi, Daryl. Uh, yes. Maybe we could have a conversation if you don't mind about the guests that we had today. Yeah, I don't know what happened to Supercacious. I, I hate it. Letting you down. Oh, it's okay, I'm darling. I'm gonna try I, so hard. No. <laughs> Don't be upset. I, I just wanted like to have a conversation about this we guest. It, I'm just wondering, if, is I, this the type I of demographic just, that we're really going for with the show with you all? This drive is so important to me. It's, it's very, very important to me. I'm yeah, going. You know, no, it, I, it's right. I it's, myself, yeah, take myself, take my handkerchief. I yes, here, yeah, take my handkerchief. Dry your cheeks. No. Yeah, I took the test. It came back positive. Look, are you sure that this is the job no, for you? Of course. You know, we just have these troubles. It, with, it seems like with the microphone I, I and, this, and the type of guests that you're bringing well, in. I just get so tired. I just get so tired of hearing all the coverage. You know, it's been three years now. <laughs> it just keeps coming back. Yeah, I know. It's got over a million Americans and all I had to do. All I had to do was put a mask on. That's all I had to do. It's completely ridiculous. I, no, I I, I'm just die. concerned, you know, there's, <laughs> there's been an absurgence <laughs> recently <laughs> and... I'm, I'm just hoping that we can bring a higher caliber guest, one that we don't have to be afraid of. Okay, right, right next time, I promise we're gonna have a better guest next time. We've got one lined up. Oh, we do? Okay, well, that's that's, a, that's edifying to hear. I'm, I certainly hope that the next guest will be a better one. It's gonna be great. Uh, do you have plans for the weekend, Carol? Do you have plans for this evening? Perhaps you just need a bit of relaxation and yeah. then you'll feel better. Yeah. We're just gonna go home and we got some wines and some beers and we're just gonna watch the Stellis game. Yeah. Well, uh, do you feel better, Carol? Uh, okay. Why, why don't we just <laughs> we'll postpone so this conversation for another time when you're feeling a little better, okay. perhaps not so I'm under the sure weather or like stressed or whatever it is that's making you behave in this way. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Have a great day. Yeah, you have a good night, okay? Okay. Bye. Yeah. If you don't turn off my microphone on the next show, Duh. I know it's not my place. Duh. I know you're the big fancy engineer. Big. And you got all the dials and you got all the switches and all the mixes and all the buttons in it. But if you don't turn off my microphone in between. Yeah, you would start your brother in people. Oh, I have a button on it. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I can turn it off this whole time. Right in here. Alright. Okay, well. Yeah, that's my fault. That's my fault I wasn't paying attention. I'll, I'll, I'll turn it off. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Alright. And from here. Yeah, okay, it's, it's just the way I talk. Some, yes, some. No, no, some. It's the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's high. Okay, then. I'll see you next week. Oh. 
Okay. Uh, feel better, Garol. Thanks again to the engineer and everyone Garol. else. Thanks for your time. You're doing a great job. Uh, let's just up it a little bit with the guests next time, if you don't mind. Yeah, the show ended a long okay. Time ago. okay. Great. Okay. Have a good night. Have a good yeah. evening, everyone. Bye. Thank you. We would love to receive your feedback, your improvisation suggestions, your questions for advice, and your musical compositions for response. Please email us or send us a voicemail. Our address is liongoatpodcast at gmail.com. And like, review, subscribe, and contact us on Facebook, Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, and YouTube at Lion Goat Podcast. Please subscribe to this podcast on your podcast player. We are available on Spotify and SoundCloud slash Lion Goat Podcast. Please tell all your friends, enemies, and any strangers to listen to our podcast. This will help us bring joy to everyone. Text-to-speech services were provided by FreeTTS.com, ReadLoud.net. Other original music for today's show was composed, performed, and recorded by the excellent musicians at Hairline Productions. Today's show was edited, produced, and recorded by the world's greatest sound designers and engineers at Hairline Productions. Please like their content on SoundCloud.